Hi, Paul Bedford here from Retention Guru. And in this video, I am going to run through some of the metrics that we use with our clients in order to help understand what's going on within the business. Now, I'm going to wear my glasses today because I need to keep looking at the screen. And um, yeah, they're just for continuity. I'm going to keep them on. Otherwise, I'm going to forget. So let's look at some of the metrics that we use when we're analyzing data for clients, whether it be a single site, a multi-site business, or even a multinational business. So let's look at the first metric. So for us, the first metric we want to look at is, and we will run what's called the 12-month retention percentage. We are trying to find out what proportion of the members completed 12 months of their membership. Now, in order to do that, we need at least 12 months and then it's still a bit shaky because not everybody who joined within the 12 month periods has an opportunity to be a member 12 months so we'll normally take a sample of two or three years and the reason we do just two or three years even if a club's got 30 years worth of data is that we want to understand what's going on now people who are still there after 30 years you probably haven't got to worry about in terms of retention but the last two or three years gives you a really good insight into what's going on now, what you can change and what you need to take action on. So traditionally, we do that as a survival curve. We take all of the members live and frozen, live and cancelled. Um, we generally exclude the frozen because we don't know what their behavior is going to be going forward. And we take their start date and their end date if they've got one and we run a survival curve. So we have both those members who are still members and those members who've left within let's say the last 36 months and what that produces is the curve that you're looking at now uh, and this is real data from an operator we're currently working with and you can see the sample period is 24 months and the proportion of members is the vertical axis so just for this example let's imagine they only had 100 members because it makes them the following the graph really easy you can see here that of 100 people that joined, after the first month, 90% of those, or 90 of them, are still left. By the time you get to month two, 74% of the members, or 74 members in this example, have left. That's one in four members who've joined and already left within the first two months. This is why that onboarding experience can be so important. It's also, it could be down to marketing, it could be down to above. Uh, memberships people are selling, whether they're doing a promotion. And if we've got an electronic record, we can split all that out and analyze that and say what's actually causing the dropout. So that is the survival curve. And we track that and we look really at where they are at 12 months. So in this example, the 12 month retention would be 59 people or 59% of the membership. The second metric we look at is average lifetime value. That's how long of the 100 people that stay, what's the average length of stay? Now, if we go back to this diagram, what we see here is the red dotted line running horizontally across at the 50th percentile mark. Now, we want to measure the average as the median. You can't measure the average in club memberships using the traditional mean because you don't want to have what's called a standard distribution. Not everybody's had the same opportunity. So we run it as the median. And what we can see here that the average lifetime value, where does the blue line cr cr cross the red dotted line? And it's somewhere close to 13 months. So on, our, on average, the lifetime value of the members is 13 months. Now, measuring lifetime value can be really important because you're looking to increase that. That's the goal of really any retention strategy is to increase the overall length of stay. Remember, retention is an outcome and there are multiple things that you can do to achieve this. Now, the next metric is the, what we refer to as the attrition number. It's the total number of people that left in any given month. And we compare that to the join number. Now, we leave it at that because we're saying if 100 people joined and 100 people left, we have no gain or no loss in terms of total membership. So, But within that attrition number, if you have 100 people leaving, as an example, in a month, some of those may be coming to an end of a contract. Some of those might be have medical reasons. Some of them might be cancelling early. 
And those cancellations could be for a number of different things. So while you might have a hundred people cancel, there might be multiple different behaviors that are going on in the background that you need to identify that make up that number. After identifying the attrition number, we do the churn rate. The churn rate is the traditional, how many people joined, added to how many members we've currently got, and we divide that by the number of people that have left. That gives you a percentage. Now you can do that monthly if you want. It's very difficult to have take any control over that. So that will go up and down. And the reason it goes up and down is because both the sales number and the attrition number affect your churn. And if you have a really good sales month, you often see attrition going down. And if you have a really bad attrition month, you see, also you have a lot of people leaving, you see the number going up. But the reason it goes down sometimes has nothing to do with the uh, actual behaviors of the members while they're in your club it had, because you had a massive influx of sales. So just be mindful of that. You can do that every month. I don't think it adds much to your understanding. And there's certainly very few behaviors that you can track using the churn rate. The final one we might look at in this example is we would always want to know how many monthly active users you've got of your membership. How many of those members are actually using the club or business? Um, you want that as high as possible. We learned during the pandemic that letting people go to sleep means that at times of crisis, they will just quit. Now, we won't even need to go into a pandemic for that to happen again. We we'll just have a, a change in the economy, uh, some worries about what's going on um, around the world, and all those people who are paying and not coming will quit. So I, the, your ideal is to keep that number as high as possible. Even We know even people who come once a month stay longer than people who are sleeping as a total lifetime value. So bear that in mind. That's it for this session. I hope you found the content useful. If you've got any questions or comments for me, please put them in the box down below. Um, if you want me to talk to you about how we would do this for your business and help you understand what's going on, then um, please get in touch at paul at retentionguru.co.uk. For now, that's it. Uh, and I'll speak to you again soon. Take care. Bye.